Trigonometric identities, chapter seven, section four. Now we've seen some trigonometric identities and basically what we're gonna do here is we're gonna pull all those together and we're going to utilize them. So let's look at the different trigonometric identities. First, the quotient identities. Tangent theta is equal to sine theta over cosine theta and cotangent theta is equal to cosine theta over sine theta. So those are the quotient identities. We're dividing one trigonometric function by another trigonometric function. The reciprocal identities, these we already know, cosecant theta is equal to one over sine theta, secant theta is equal to one over cosine theta, and cotangent theta is equal to one over tangent theta. The Pythagorean identities, and I showed these to you and I show you how they work. Most common one, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to one. And then the less common ones, or I should say, not less common, but the ones that might be a little harder for us to remember. But remember, all of this comes out of the Pythagorean theorem. X squared plus Y squared is equal to R squared. If you're dealing with the unit circle, R is equal to one. And then if we divide through by sine squared, or if we divide through by cosine squared, that's where these other two come from. So we get tangent squared theta plus one is equal to secant squared theta and secant and cotangent squared theta plus one is equal to cosecant squared theta. And then our odd even identities or even odd identities, the sine of negative theta is equal to negative sine of theta. Remember these are based on whether the function is odd or even. Sine is an odd function. So if you take the sine of a negative angle, that's equal to the negative of the sine of the, of the positive angle. Cosine is an even function. So if you take the cosine of a negative angle, that's equal to the cosine of the positive angle. Tangent is an odd function. So tangent of negative theta is equal to negative tangent of theta. Then cosecant is odd, so cosecant of negative theta is equal to negative cosecant of theta. Secant is even, so the secant of negative theta is equal to the secant of theta. And cotangent is odd, so the cotangent of negative theta is equal to negative cotangent of theta. So you may ask yourself, well, why do I need to know all these? Okay, great, so we've got all these trigonometric identities. What we're gonna deal with now is establishing an identity we're going to prove that something is equal to something else. Now, it is almost always preferable to start with the side containing the more complicated expression. Okay, standard practice is to do that. It's not always the best way, but in general, it's easier to start with something complicated and simplify it to something else than it is to start with something that's simple and expand it out because there are too many ways that you can expand something simple out. So trying to find that one way that gets you to a much more complicated expression is much harder than taking something that's complicated and just simplifying it down until you get it to the right simpler expression. Rewrite sums or differences of quotients as a single quotient. So whenever you've got rational expressions that are being added or subtracted, find a common denominator and write them as a single quotient and one as one rational expression. Sometimes it helps to rewrite one side in terms of sine or cosine functions only. And that is very true that as you deal with that, it's really easy to work with sines and cosines and then get from there to other trigonometric functions it's much harder to deal with a whole bunch of cosecants and tangents and other things and try to pull them together and make them work. And now this is critical. Always keep the goal in mind. You always have to think about where am I trying to get to? What is my goal? What is my final point of being? Otherwise, you can go off and you start moving things around. And next thing you know, you did a great thing and you proved something awesome, but it's not what we were trying to prove. 
So always keep in mind, where are you trying to get to so you can, as you do these manipulations, you can work towards that goal. Well, let's look at an example here. So if I have the identity cosecant u minus cotangent u is equal to sine u over one plus cosine u. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, when we are establishing an identity, we don't work on both sides at the same time. This isn't where we start doing things and we don't subtract cosecant u from both sides and leave us with negative cotangent u is equal to sine u over one plus cosine u minus cosecant u. We don't do that. We're not working on both sides. The goal is to start with one of the sides of this, of this identity and just keep manipulating that side until the result is the other side. So what I'm gonna do is, I know both sides of these look a little complicated, but I see that the right-hand side has everything in terms of sine or cosine. Whereas the left-hand side has cosecant, cotangent. And if you remember what we looked at with our things, Sometimes it helps to rewrite one side in terms of sine and cosine function. Always keep the goal in mind, always, you know, almost always preferable to start with the side containing the more complicated expression. So looking at this, I see the right-hand side's already in sine and cosine. So since the left-hand side's dealing with cosecant and cotangent, I'd consider that to be the more complicated side. So that's where I'm gonna start. So I'm going to say cosecant u minus cotangent u is equal to cosecant u is 1 over sine u. Cotangent u is cose cosine u over sine u, right? So I used a reciprocal function, and I used a quotient function. Or I should say I used a reciprocal identity and a quotient identity. So I rewrote cosecant u as one over sine u minus cotangent u as cosine u over sine u. So now I, the next thing that I need to do is I now have one over sine u minus cosine u over sine u. I have a common denominator, so I'm gonna tie those together. I'm gonna to say, well, if I have a common denominator that I subtract, so I have one minus cosine u over sine u. Right, so I just put it over a common denominator. And now I'm looking at this and going, okay, well, I see that I want one plus cosine u to be in my denominator. If I look back at the beginning here, we see that I had cosecant u minus cotangent u is equal to sine u over one plus cosine u. So I want one over cos and one plus cosine u to be in my denominator. And I also see that that happens to be the conjugate of one minus cosine u. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply the top and the bottom by one plus cosine u. So that's what you see here, one minus cosine u over sine u multiplied by one, over one plus cosine u over one plus cosine u. So when I do that, on the top, that's the product of a sum and a difference. So I get one squared minus cosine squared u. And on the bottom, I get sine u times one plus cosine u, right? So on the top, I just get this difference of squares and I get this sine u cosine squared u, sorry, sine u one plus cosine u. But now I should see that one minus cosine squared u that's part of a Pythagorean identity. That's equal to sine squared u, right? Sine squared u plus cosine squared u is equal to one. Solving that for sine squared, I get sine squared u is equal to one minus cosine squared u. So I can substitute sine squared u in my numerator. And now I should see that I have sine squared u over sine u times one plus cosine u. So I have a common factor in the numerator and the denominator that sine u. So if I divide that out, <clears throat> I'm left with sine u on the top and one plus cosine u on the bottom. 
and I have established the identity that cosecant u minus cotangent u is equal to sine u over one plus cosine u. So let's start with one side and just start manipulating it until you get to the point where you have the other side. Start with the most complicated side, start by turning things into sine and cosine because they're easier to work with and work your way through using identities to do it.